metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. like a hero supposed to. Sounds like that's the artist's fault, not mine. Um, no. I can't work under these conditions. I should have a subject who's worthy of my artistry. Someone who resembles a true hero. Instead, I just get a big baby. Hate to interrupt you both, but I need some help. I need our brave and helpful volley for a task outside. An important job outside the ship. For a job? A heroic job? Of course it's heroic. It's in outer space, definitely. A heroic kind of job. For a heroic kind of sheep. Astronaut Wally, reporting for duty. Good. I'll be at the airlock chamber. So glad I don't have to test these new spacesuits. I have a quest now. Babies don't do important space work. Oh, this I won't need. Wah, wah, wah. Somebody's brave. <laughs> the important thing to remember is how to activate the protection suit. This button is what will activate the suit. Then give your command. Got it? Yes, sir. Wally to computer. Set up protection mode. Command understood. Protection mode initiated. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now try command initiate my spacesuit mode. Go, space mode. Initiating spacesuit mode. Spacesuit mode initiated. I'm good. What a day. Engines, start. <laughs> I'm no baby. A hero. Not a baby. A hero. <laughs> Engine start. <laughs> Yep, heroic. That's Wally. Hand me the wrench. Wrench is handed. No, the other wrench. Yes, it's the other wrench. No, I need wrench 12. Uh, wrench number 12, huh? <sighs> Heroes don't need wrenches. <laughs> Hin, when does the heroic job start? Well, I'm working on that as we speak. This device I'm making will make antimatter. Oh, antimatter. That seems adventurous. What does that mean? We know everything around us is made of atoms. And atoms are made of smaller particles. We call those elementary particles. In the center is a proton, and they get circled by electrons, which have a negative charge. Since the charges are opposite, they are attracted to one another. That orbit never stops. They circle each other till the end of time. Hmm. Now let's see what would happen if you switch the charge. 
Looks like it's still got the same overall charge with a couple of key differences. That electron, now positive, is called a positron. And the proton, which is now negative, is called an antiproton. These particles are called antiparticles. They are like the opposite of any atom or substance in the entire universe. The concept is antimatter. Wait, so you're telling me that my charges are simply the opposite of whatever this antimatter's charge is? I thought it would be more complicated than that. Who's this guy think he is, huh? But it's amazing! Antimatter can never occur in nature. But it can be created if an atom's nucleus is exposed to enough radiation. <laughs> Giving nuclei a good dose of radiation is just what my machine's going to do. That sounds great, Pin. When's it done? Now. It's been ready. We just press this and let my genius do its work. Uh, I mean it best. Uh. Uh, if this all goes according to plan, we'll be heroes in the field of science. Heroes? Of course. Scientific heroes. But done for now. It's a long, long process. Let's head back to the ship for now. Engines, start! <laughs> heroes don't just wait. They take action. I have returned from my heroic mission. My day of being a hero has been quite heroic, as you can imagine. Well, you can hear about it later. number 12. Whoa. Is that Pin's antimatter? I hope this means we'll be big science heroes, because this is huge. Uh, hey, Pin, silly question. So what, uh, you know, is um, antimatter used for anyway? I mean, hypothetically. Antimatter is so useful and powerful. If a normal particle meets with a particle of antimatter, the result is that they both disappear completely. It's crazy. Poof! It's called annihilation. Annihilation, huh? But what exactly happens when they meet, though? Please, don't tell me it's a kind of explosion. Of course. If a particle and an antiparticle meet each other, it produces a crazy amount of energy. Yes, an explosion. Is it like a kind of bomb? No, not quite. It's more like a battery. One kilogram of antimatter, when it experiences annihilation, could power the entire Earth for half an hour. Isn't that wild? We could power ships that go even faster into space. Our fuel could take us to the farthest reaches of the farthest galaxies. The future will be found in antimatter. But what do we do if it collapses? Or if that thing gets so big that it just explodes before we can use it? That's why I put it safely outside our ship in outer space. Antimatter will be just fine. Float around, not touch anything out there. What about afterwards? What do you do with the giant death ball? That's why I built this handy magnetic trap here. It suspends the antimatter safely inside the can so it doesn't touch anything. You think it can fit in that tiny glass tube? The whole big thing? It's not a big thing. <laughs> I only made a tiny amount for here. That's all, Pin. That's great. I've done something very bad. It's growing too fast. What do I do? Ah, I shouldn't have lost the wrench. What if this thing falls down to Earth? He said something about antimatter and matter, the different charges, something about a huge explosion. Annihilation, he said. No, not like this. I have to take it somewhere, somewhere far away from the ship. But how do I manage that? How do I do that? I can't. Come on, Wally. You have to think of something. We have to destroy something. Something we can't even get close to. We can hit it with something of equal size and make it annihilate itself. Brilliant. This is a hero's plan. 
Meaning this is a job for Wally the Hero! There goes that idea. Computer, let's go be heroes. Initiate protection suit mode. Initiating protective suit mode. Alert, protective suit mode has been activated. Do not leave the ship. So, you guys have been busy, huh? I activated protective suit mode, but it's not for me. It's for you guys and the ship. Hang on, what's he saying? Protect what? This may be one small step for sheep, but one giant leap for the rest of us. Gotta get this giant anti-bomb. Anyway, Rose, I'm no baby. Goodbye. I'm more confused than before. What did he mean? And did he say anti-bomb? Anti-matter, meet me. I'm not a baby. I'm a hero! Wally! Hello? Earth to Wally? How long are you going to lay on the moon, you lazy goat? I can't believe it. Moon? Oh, so heroic. I can't believe you decided to ram into the moon! Forgive me. I didn't realize that you had Wolfer brains! Hey! Wally, why'd you crank up the power on my antimatter? It exploded! <sighs> I've had worse days. Oh, man. It's wrench number 12, right? <sighs> A hero. The idea behind antimatter particles was first introduced by Paul Dirac. Dirac was an English physicist who first came up with the idea of antiparticles and won a Nobel Prize in physics in 1933. But the discovery of the positron is a different story. That was discovered by Carl Anderson, who then won the 1936 Nobel Prize in physics.